God, uh, all of a sudden it just occurred to me, you know, that I ain't blown money away in years, you know? And so I sold uh, two sculptures and I had quite a bit of money on me, you know? So, right there, so, uh, you know, I had the hotel rooms and now all the fanning comes down for dinner, you know, man, I got champagne, I got Jim Beanie Boy, they're bringing on the fruit balls or anything. Paul said, how are we going to pay for it? I said, well, to forget about it, you know? I haven't blown money off in years, and I'm just going to blow it off, you know? Man, it felt so good. Oh, man. That yeah, felt so good. And we had a hell of a good time, you know? After I talked to this loser, man, pretty good. And I talked pretty straight to him. And I uh, had to keep my son and my nephew from wiping him out. <laughs> they wanted to go wipe him out. I said, wait a minute. So I took them outside. I said, listen, you guys, you know? If anybody's going to wipe me out, I'm going to wipe me out. <laughs> so, you're waiting for me, you know, but we're not going to, because we're not going to spoil this for Donna. See, this is going to be our time together. So we really did. We had a hell of a way to do it. It was really great. Yeah, great. So, son, he does kayaks, you know. <laughs> he uh, makes kayaks, races kayaks, and he hot dog skis, and plays ceramic tile. Earn a living, see. So they're out there at this conference, and uh, so after this conference was over, da -da -da, everybody went home and everything. So I called my son up and I said, How you doing? He said, Man, he said, Dad, I'll tell you. He said, I took your advice. I was 24 and I started taking my life. I said, Advice, what did I say? He said, Well, I quit work. <laughs> 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 I said, what? What? He said, Well, he says, Here you are. He said, I'm there, and here you are, sitting there, and you got 300 people listening to what you're saying. You're not saying nothing to them that you haven't said to us, L Y, we're growing up. And I said, yeah, it's about right. And he said, and they're paying you for us. I said, oh, no, I'm far out. But he said, you said that you could either be a leader or a follower, you know? He said, I was tired of being a follower, so I started my own business. And then far out. So he started his own straight up tile business, he calls it. So uh, he's got more work now than he knows what to do with, you know? And uh, he said, I don't mind doing an eight an hour day as long as it's my my business, you know, and he's really into that, and he's still canoeing, and he's, the gal he's with is, she's really great. She's a ski instructor, and, uh, and, uh, like that, you know, works out things. Anyhow, we had a good time, you know. Sometimes you never know when this turn aren't listening to you. <laughs> or if it's important that they really do listen to you. It's not really that important. Butch married my daughter. <laughs> Saves things. Dogs, cats, you know, addicts, you know, really bad, you know. Really. Huh? I know it. Just, you know, she was the biggest girl in every class she was ever in, right? I mean, a big girl, right? You can pick Donna out any of the high school or grade school pictures. Here's Donna, you know. Just mother takes care of everybody, you know. So kind. Such a great guy. This guy's, you know. I'm not just because, you know, I like my daughter to marry her or not her or whatever. I like the guy she's been most of, you know. And so, uh, this guy's been run out of Florida, you know, for an illegal pot operation going in Florida, you know. And he had a, he had a recipe for selling guns to Mexicans, you know. <laughs> and he's 38, 38, you know, he's been married twice since his third time. He's got three kids someplace. Like, he's got a good track record, you know. <laughs> See? And so I had a hard, hard talk with him outside the bar this one night. Thomas said, Butch, I said, I want you to know that, you know, you're, you're basically a loser, you know, I mean, you know, it's the way it is, you know. And I got to tell you from my father's point of view, you know, you're not a good track record and everything. We had a good talk. You know? And, uh, anyhow, so the other day I get a big, last week, right after I found I got sick. I got this big car like this, you know, all in. I see, and I lost my glasses, see, I couldn't see me. I see these pictures, and I look at them, and I said, oh, my God, I think God was in a wedding someplace, you know? And I think, yeah, oh, Christ, I think that's her. Get married, dear. What is I couldn't see. I'm looking all over the house. I took the water glasses, you know? I'm trying to read. I said, God, I couldn't read. I'm trying to read what it said in a little printer. You know what I'm like, about, so. so I got married. So. I'm sure we're going to get you. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, I did. I told him, you know, I wrote enough letter. I just called him up, you know. I mean, I'll do all I can. I hope it does work out, you know. And, you know, who's to say that, the, you know, like maybe the guy is switching around, you know. It's just that he has his hard time getting a job, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he's going on surfers a lot. Money in surfing. He's 
Las Gatas. Las Gatas, yeah, by Big Sur. Yeah. Well, unless you screwed up. Anyhow, now my first wife is remarried. Nobody. <laughs> no, which is a good deal. It was a good deal. We, we separated for 23 years. And, uh, you know, mutual kind of thing, because we're just kind of, it wasn't like a doubt, you know, we're kind of growing in different directions, so we figured, hey, we're getting older, you know, we better. It's right, it's a good idea, you know, so. She went back to Jersey after selling the farm and my horses and saddles and everything. <laughs> yeah, I got $10,000 worth of debts. <laughs> Anyhow, so they got their honey cabin out in Maine. How's the lake or boat? So they're all good. So Donna's good, I guess. I'm Brent's good. You <laughs> Paul's good. Well, sure, right? Huh? So I can feel a real say so now, like there's a big surge back now in my life, you know, and I'm doing a lot of things. I have a lot more energy now. See, there for a while, Paul and I were living in an apartment, you know. No control over your life at all, you know. I mean, you know, who's smoking downstairs, who's doing their barbecue out on your, the balcony, you know, starting cars at 3 in the morning. So we got an acre and a half of land and a house and a couple of studios. So she has her studio and I have my studio. Never the twain meet, which is good. She has this total disrespect for tools, you know? Like I had saws and hammers and chisels for about 20 years, you know? It took her a month, no, no, a couple of weeks. <laughs> totally destroyed it. <laughs> Sawing insulation bricks, but good saw. <laughs> but she didn't have no way to or anything like that, you know? So we made a deal, see? We got a lot of deals. Because one deal we made was. I would teach her a tool. For every tool, she'd teach me two words, right? So that's the way we did it, you know? So now when I get up from the table, I'm not full, I'm replete. <laughs> you know? <laughs> when I go down to her mom, I thought I got down to her mom. I'm very retired down there. Golf course down there in Arkansas someplace. But I have this problem with words because I say them the way they sound or something, you know? Like I'll say, uh, I'm going to go to a symposium, you know? And she says, right. You know? Or I say, uh, what the other one is really, I think, uh, like obese. She's not obese. Really obese. Oh. And I'll spell things like within two words, you know? Oh, I know what she's getting on. They say voluptuous. Kind of better, isn't it? A lump seems to be there. She just tells me, kind of, now the kids in school are really good. My kids in school, they all know me. They're really, they're so good. They protect me and everything. They're really good people. You know? The phone rings. They answer it. Say, may I take a message? Who is this? If it sounds important. Now get me, you know. It's really pretty neat. So now when I'm talking, you know, and I'll be saying something, we'll just pretend like I'll say, and I'm coming to a word. I'll be talking, you know, and you'll all be my class sitting there, see? We're all sort of half sleeping or whatever. And uh, I'll be coming to word and I'll say, uh, and it, she was very uh, voluptuous, and I'll go, <laughs> and it'll all correct me at one time in unison. You know, this is great. This is great. So I'm going to start off with the middle piece because it's the hardest one to throw. <laughs> but this one, I think, I think I'll need more cray. Oh, 
not that much. 50? Maybe. Something like that. It feels like about 130, but it's not really. It's like in a second. But if you think positive, see? Another thing I'm doing. I'm trying to think positive to everything, you know? Excuse me. Trying to turn all situations into positive situations. Well, this is going to be very positive. I feel good. <laughs> I got a new truck, you know, about five months ago. I got 27,000 miles on it already, you know? I love trucking. I love it. But see, Paula, why? Name Paula Rice. It's close to Rice, but she keeps her name as Rice. In fact, it's good. So she taught the summer session out in the Flagstaff, you know. So I just take little quick speed runs out the Flagstaff, you know, for six weeks. That's 1,500 miles one way, you know. <laughs> Boy, you really put the miles on the truck, you know. So amazing what men will do for her. Amazing what they'll go through. <laughs> You have control, huh? <laughs> you got her. <laughs> I love when that the other way. <clears throat> but I'd go different ways, you know? Like one time I went by way of New York. <laughs> and it goes there, you know? Which is really nice. And then one time by Bozeman, way by Bozeman. And I <clears throat> met so many good people, interesting people and things, you know? It was really exciting trips. So, <clears throat> but I can just... Uh, I just get on, you know. So what I got left for my horses, I got uh, two saddle blankets left, an old pig and string, a hat, and a whip, oddly enough. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> but uh, that's about it, you know. So I just, you know, put my hat on, plug in my CB, and I take off trucking. You know, I just, I'm very seldom alone, you know. It's hard for me to find some place to be alone. When I'm in the truck, I'm alone, you know. And I find myself fantasizing and pretending now, even yet, you know. I'm alone in the truck. It's really important to be that way. I don't mind. So, so uh, I, I, I'll tell you, I'm going down towards, uh, went down by Kansas City, you know, and then went down through uh, Wichita. So I get down to Wichita once it's getting late at night, and uh, I turn the CV off to make a lot of squawking noise. And no sooner I turn that sucker off, you know. Here comes the cop. Oh, geez, and I was going like eight, you know. Oh, man, man. And so he pulls me over. See? Oh, boy, here it comes. Older man, about ready to retire. He says, You know, you're going 69 mile an hour. Oh, boy, thank God. <laughs> I said, I was. He said, Yes, you were. And I said, Why are you going so fast? I said, Well, I didn't realize I was going fast. I was trying to, you know, get on my way to the flag step and went down. He says, you see those oil wells out there in that field out there sucking that oil out of the earth? And I said, yes, sir, I do. He says, there ain't much oil left in that earth, you see. They can only suck so much. We got to conserve it. I thought, uh oh, we got to talk lesson going here. I'm like, I'll make this positive situation, you know. The evening is shot, right with you. So he says, uh, was well, it a converse, uh, uh, conversationist, you know? <laughs> you know? And he said, uh, uh, he said, well, you don't seem to be. Why are you going so fast then? And I said, well, I was in a hurry to kind of see my wife, which didn't make any mind to him at all. And I said, but the hell, I said, you know, I got a wood stove, I heat my house with wood. He says, did you do? I said, yeah. What kind of stove you got? I said, well, I got a fisher. He says, you know, I just put a fisher in my basement. He said, yeah, I put a grandma fisher in there. I said, good. We start talking about the wood stove and everything and conserving that, talking along. And he said, you know, he said, you're a pretty good fellow there. What do you say your wife does? And I'm telling you, he said, you're an artist. He said, you know, I got a neighbor who's an artist. He just painted me. Pictures of ducks, and they look just like real flying right over my fireplace. And I said, no kidding. He said, yeah. I said, he said, they're really good. I said, well, I do pottery and that kind of strength. He said, yes, I do. That's interesting because my wife does a little bit of that. But you can always find it. Somebody said, always do some of that. So I said, really? He said, yeah. He got talking. He said, you know, he said, it's going to cost you 30 bucks, you know? I said, oh, that's okay. I know it's going to cost Right now we're on first name basis, right? And, uh, he said, I'll tell you, he said, do you have anything to eat? Yeah. I said, no. I said, come on, I'll buy a coffee. He said, okay. So he went over to the diner about a mile and a half by the road there. 
He bought me a coffee. We were talking. He said, "You know, Don." I said, "I face this. I don't get a chance."